hi let's finalize our previous video where we discussed uh commutation of our bldc motor and we we are able to have this one is a hull sensor we are able to model a sensor that can be able to measure the actual position of the of the rotor then the sensor triggers certain communication commutation logic as you can see here that enables us to energize certain pair of stator windings hence our rotor starts to spin today the focus will be modeling uh, uh modeling modeling a system that has a desired speed and comparing with the actual speed then using a PID controller to control the speed. Let's begin. Let's start by adding our desired speed, the speed we need, because we don't want our BLDC to have a constant speed. Because right now, if you simulate, it's going to rotate at a constant speed. What about when I need a different speed? You go to library. Simulink source. I'm going to use a repeating sequence to define the speeds I need. Therefore, you double click the repeating sequence. I need the time values from 0 to 0 0.23 seconds. is 3.5 the speed to be different initial speed to be zero then get another maybe 200 300 400 600 maybe 600 continuous maybe thousand and a thousand those are the speeds i need from my BLDC motor. If we have to measure the actual ex external speed, the actual speed here, therefore, we have to measure the speed. Therefore, let me delete this. I need an output port to enable me to measure the actual speed. Therefore, this one is uh, measured. Measured speed. This is a measured speed using my ideal rotational motion sensor. Therefore, if you go back now, we need not to use a uh, sum. Let me use uh, this block to compare. Not to use this block of sum. I'll be summing. I want to use uh, with a negative. If I will be comparing the desired speed here then the uh, the difference between the we usually use a negative so that we can get the difference between the desired speed and the actual measured speed Therefore, the system, this one is a uh, measured speed. The system will be taking the value of the measured speed here. Find the, find the differences. Then the error between, the difference between these two, we have to use now a PID controller to compute the appropriate actions. You can learn more about PID's controller. It's a very wide topic. I'm going to use a PI. I will use a discrete time for the time domain. For the P, I'm I'm going to use 0 0.01. They usually work for me. You have to tune 
you can research on how to tune your PID to get a pro, to, to get uh, optimum values for PIND. In case you need a video for me to explain how you tune, just let me know in the comments. I can make a video and explain to you how we can be able to tune your PID. This one is a PID controller. If you want to see the name at the inside, just right click, you go to format, block, on. Whenever you have such a loop, remember this one is a, a closed loop, always use a unit delay so that we can be able to prevent algebraic groups. Then for the this voltage source, let know that it is a, a constant one, and we need to, but for a certain speed value, we need to set a different voltage to the system. Therefore, I have to delete this. The reason I said we have to put our voltage outside, because that is we are going to control the voltage, not the actual system. Just that for now, because you are using a computation logic. In a near future videos, I will explain how you can use PWM, that's the best control method, part with modulation, control motors, but now I'm going to use a, a controlled voltage for simulation purpose, you go to the same scape as usual, I need to go to foundation, I'll use electrical sources here. I need to use a controlled voltage source here, this one. It will be supplying the demanded voltage irrespective of the current brew. Therefore, you have to connect this, this. And you can never connect these two direct. You have to do conversion. like that then this, this one is my negative this one is a uh, voltage signal this one is our sector and a switch pattern is here We didn't connect this. Like that. I think you're okay. Now, we need to log this data for the desired speed here. We can log that data. Let's log a voltage value. I also need to log if you go back to the to the sector on to log this value. I think we are done now. Yeah yeah. That's how you model uh that's how you model a commutation logic for a BRDC motor. If you go back to MATLAB you can now run remember the script i used previously you just change the name and run your model okay therefore let me let me run this and see what happens modeling computation logic run
Let's see what happens when you press one button. This is now the graph that these are now the um uh, this is my motor that has been that's the symbolic of our BLDC motor. Once I press one button, this one is supposed now to rotate continuously because now my my commutation logic keeps changing. Therefore, the rotor is supposed to rotate. Let's see if that's in action. The rotor starts at remember you're using a desired speed, start at a zero speed. The rotor will start to accelerate. It is using the desired speed and getting the difference between the measured speed. Using that field feedback loop and using a PID controller is able to compute the appropriate value. Let's see. You can see the widings are being uh, switching as we expected. Yeah. C high B low A high B low. Yeah, you see. They are switching as you expect. And I said like terms like poles repel. The reason these ones are repelling is being attracted this side. Repel this one, attract it here. That's what's happening. No, no, it is now decelerating. Yeah. Make sure your system is able to animate like this. Okay, now we are done. You can now go to data inspector so that you can be able to do comparison between the desired speed and the measured speed. Remember what we did? When you, whenever you log these data, the data gets stored. You store the data so that you can be able now to inspect. Log means saving the data. We have our desired speed here. This is the desired speed as I defined. Remember my maximum was a thousand. This is the speed I, de I defined. But my measured speed, you can see the measured speed. Yeah, it is almost accurately equal to, it is almost accurate. Although there's some error due to PID, but you can see they are almost the same. Yeah, no, no, this is the voltage. You can see now it is setting the variable voltage to the to the to the to the BLDC motor. Okay, that's how you can be able to model BLDC motor. Use commutation logic to control the speed of the to control the speed and to enable the rotor to spin. Now in, in now in my next video, I'm going to focus on actual modeling of the power power train of electrical vehicle it will be an amazing video we are going to model the now the body mechanical systems we're going to integrate we're going to integrate all these systems i've been building to make now an a functional electrical vehicle we'll be building electrical vehicle system by system then we'll be we'll be now combining all these systems into one big model and simulate it will be a very good project See you in my next video.